guys, welcome to Foodies Live. We're streaming live from the Sub-Zero Wolf showroom kitchens in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I'm joined with um, chef or student Jeff. Student. <laughs> student. And um, today we're in the kitchen with Chef Josh Hebert of Posh Restaurant. He's going to show us some goat tacos. So without, oh, and maybe a cocktail or two. Maybe a cocktail or two. Nice. And if you have any questions, please feel free to um, Post them in the chat room and we'll get them answered. So without further ado, I'll kick it over to Chef Josh. Hello. Welcome. You're probably wondering what this little cinnamon stick here has to do with all this stuff right in front of you. Today we're gonna, uh, where you're gonna cook the most underutilized in America, but the most utilized meat in the world, and that is goat. Now you're saying to yourself, why would I ever use goat? Well, if you have an ethnic market somewhere close by, you would probably be able to get fresh goat, if not, maybe a little frozen. Uh, goat is a very sustainable animal. It produces a lot of dairy and towards the end of its life when it's not producing dairy anymore, you can sacrifice it for the better good of your family and enjoy a nice meaty meal. People ask all the time, is goat gamey? A little teeny bit. That's okay. We're gonna use cooking techniques that are gonna hide those kind of exotic gamey flavors and just bring out the richness of the meat itself. Today, we have a goat leg. Now, nice. it does take a little bit of effort to roast these things and coax out all the flavor. Well, we're going to be able to do that. But like any good Mexican fiesta, we are definitely going to start off with a cocktail. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a shaker, throw a cinnamon stick in it. I have two drops of EW's Meyer Lemon Bitters. These come from Agritopia, which is a farm not very far away here. I am going to squeeze a little teeny bit of lemon juice. Fresh squeezed lemon juice. I'm going to use a little teeny bit of lime juice. Fresh squeezed lime juice. This is my 7-Up style cocktail except with tequila. And then we're going to add a little teeny bit of oregano. I know, where is this going, right? Oregano. <laughs> we need some club soda. A little teeny pinch of fresh ginger. And I'm going to use some Reposado tequila from a local distillery named Senor Rio, no, we're not growing agaves in Scottsdale, but the family that owns it is from Scottsdale. And this is their Reposado. It's the best bang for the buck. It's an amazingly rich, deep, smoky Reposado tequila. And I'm going to top it off with a little ice. We are going to give this a nice stout shake. And once we're ready, after a good 30 second shake or so, drop that into a glass. You can strain it out if you don't want your bits of herbs. If you are okay with bits of herbs, then leave your bits of herbs in there. If you're not a cocktail person, you could always be a beer person. If you ever want to learn a quick way to open a beer and you can't find an opener, take a fist, turn it sideways, stick the blade of the butt end of a very heavy knife, turn once, and you go ahead and pop your top off. That looks scary. You're drinking a beer. Just be careful when trying that at home. Maybe don't use your sharpest knife. <laughs> All right, let's see how we did on our cocktail. Yum, salty, sweet, savory, a little bit lemony. Perfect. So, if you want, and it's a cold day and you want to cut your tequila a little bit, you can also add a little bit of club soda, but I'm okay with it without the club soda. <clears throat> All right, so you're saying to yourself, <coughs> how are we going to cook this big piece of leg and get all the flavor out of it. But well, first we're gonna sear it on both sides and we're gonna add some seasonings and we're gonna slow roast it in the oven. You're gonna have an oven preheated to about 375, 400 if you want a little more color, but it takes about three to four hours to roast a whole go leg like this. So we are gonna heat up a pan, get everything going. And in the meantime, we can cut a couple of our uh, seasoning agents and things that we're gonna need to go ahead and season with. So we're gonna need onions and I've got a red and a yellow onion here. I'm gonna cut them in quarters. And I'm going to be a hack today and totally leave the skins on because we're not actually going to be eating these in the end. We're just using them for their seasoning. We have some chilies. We can take some uh, hatch chilies, cut them in half. This time of year, the hatch chilies aren't as hot as they are in the fall, but they're still pretty darn tasty. So go ahead again. We can leave those in larger chunks. I don't need to break out my brunoise and show off my fancy French knife, knife skills today because we aren't doing anything fancy. We're uh, doing roasted goat. So once we got our pan preheated, 
we're going to grab a mixing bowl and we need to season our goat real good. I have an enormous amount of spices here to give kind of a pretty interesting array of flavors. We're going to start with some cayenne pepper, season it pretty aggressively. Dried ginger, season that pretty aggressively. Some red chili flakes. I have a little smoked Spanish paprika. Mexican oregano, and anytime you're using dried spices, guys, just always remember, you need the heat from your hands to activate the oils. So heat them and rub them together real good. I have some coriander seed, star anise pods. You're like, wow, you got a lot of stuff in here, chef. Yes, we do. I have some <laughs> fennel seed, black pepper, whole corns, white pepper, whole corns. And then the rest we're gonna use once we get everything roasting. So I want you to take a little bit of salt. You can be fairly aggressive. A lot of this seasoning is gonna come off as it roasts and cooks. And then we'll just take this, maybe drizzle with a little bit of olive oil. And rub all your seasonings in there. Toss it around real good. Let everything get coated nicely. Front, back, all up and down the leg strong, assertive spices here. So you're saying to yourself, as we talked at the beginning of the show, how come goat isn't used more often? Well, I think it's becoming more prevalent in the Southwest due to the influence of the Mexican culture, definitely. So uh, I think you should, if you have the opportunity, go out and give it a try. It's a really unique and interesting meat. Good for you, healthy, and, and fun. It's a good way to show off for your friends, right? Hey, it's something you never had before. We have so a you got a preheated over pan. Here. It's ready to go. Not quite smoking hot, but close to it. We had a quick question. Sure. How many different cuts are there out the goat, out of a goat? You know, it's very similar to a lamb, but people don't do. Um, it's similar in size to a lamb. People don't do quite uh, as fine cuts of it. Usually, it's more roasting and slow cooking due to the kind of rich nature. But you can get almost this, any cut that you can get on a lamb. You see goats often whole or cut up in quarters or a leg quarter like this. Interesting. I'm going to do it skin side down first. Always remember to lay things away from you so you don't splash yourself. Sorry, I got to clean my hands here. I had another question too. So you said to rub the spices in your hand to only if they're hot spices? Dried spices. Oh, uh, dried spices. Dried leaf spices like dried thyme, dried oregano, dried basil. Rubbing them together will activate the oils in them and make them a little more fragrant. Oh, Generally, right. you're going to use dried spices in something that's going to cook longer and fresh spices toward the end of the cooking process and something. That way you're not wasting them. Nice fresh spices. Be a little careful because these spices, if you're not doing them under commercial hoods like us and you got nice hot heat, you could make everyone in the room cough. So just be very careful. Oh. So what we're going to do now, you're going to hear the coughs in about two seconds. I'm going to deglaze with a little tomato product. We'll give that two seconds to work. There we go. Sorry about the noise. I just didn't want to blow everyone out of the room. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Then I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my spices that I have in that bowl. Just dump everything on in there. <coughs> Got myself. Oh no. Oh no. We got another question over here. Sure. So of all the different spices you used, do they all complement each other or is any of them going to overpower the other with all the different kinds of peppers you used? No, they're actually going to all commingle really well, especially the longer it cooks, the flavors really, really mold together and create a really, really deep dimensions of flavor. So it's kind of multi-layered. I'm going to throw my bay leaves in. I get a couple cinnamon sticks to go along with my star anise there. And then I have two kinds of chilies. I got some dried chipotles. And I got some dried ancho chili. We're going to take those, kind of let them roast away, reduce the liquid just a touch. And this is going to go right into that oven that we have pre-prepared. Nice. We have to remove our magically done one first. The magic of TV. The magic of TV. Oh. So our modern technology allows us to remove this amazing already cooked lamb leg. <laughs> and here we have it. You'll notice this one's a little bigger than the last one. But here's wow. my lamb leg, cooked and raring to go.
golden brown on the outside, juicy and moist. There's a nice thick layer of skin there, which is actually really good for you, tasty, even tastier than pig skin or chicken skin, in my opinion. And you have this beautiful liquid down here. That's great to, you're gonna use eventually. You can grind everything up and make it into a, like a soup or a sauce to go along with things. You can baste slowly while it's cooking to let everything kind of absorb, let all the flavors kind of get in there, mingle real nicely. And we're just gonna take this and let it rest. And then we're gonna pick all the meat off of that and turn it into a little bit of a fiesta. So I'm gonna set this aside, let that kind of settle and rest. And then we're gonna show you a couple different things you can do with all these things. Make a nice little goat platter for you and all your friends. We have another question. Sure. So you did, you, you said at the beginning of the show it took about three, four hours. Correct. And that's just because it's a tougher cut of meat? Correct, exactly. So there's, is there a little bit marbling in that leg at all? There's the a fat? lot of gelatin, and a lot of gelatin in, in connective tissues that will slowly melt away, and that's kind of where you want to go with that. Okay. Good old beer. Does that cut back on the spices hitting the back of your throat? A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to move my cutting board into a little bit better of a view here. In my haste to be funny on TV or the internet, I forgot to put my <laughs> spices in there, or my veggies in there, my pseudo mirepoix. So we're going to go ahead and throw our onions in here too. And our chilies. And we're going to let everything roast away. Are you going to use those, the, your pseudo mirepoix afterwards? It's going to be cooked to death pretty good. But like I said, you can kind of pulverize it, strain it, and, and use it as a sauce for something. Oh. So it's a one way to go, definitely. All right, at the, the end, we'll throw these fresh herbs on top of it and let everything go to town. But we're going to start off with a couple of different types of offerings for a platter. One option is to go through and make like a chips and dip kind of platter where we have a little stewed goat meat in the center. And again, you can take that... Uh, take some of that goat meat, shred it out, and mix it in with a little bit of that sauce, and you have a dipping sauce. So you could do, for instance, some chips. You might have a favorite brand. Again, we're in the Southwest, so we have a lot more choices than a lot of people in other places. That's not a bad thing. Nobody ever minds too much choice. We have two kinds. Of, I got some, some cream cheese here, if you're more of a Southwest kind of fan. If you're more hardcore, we have a little sour cream. Everybody likes a little fat with their Mexican food, right? So maybe you do like a little sour cream platter. We have some refried beans. And then we have the world famous avocado. Nothing better than a little fresh avocado on top of your feast, right? Right? Tasty. Yeah. Which, Everyone loves an avocado. What's your recommendation for check and freshness of an avocado? Um, question. Ooh, roll the dice. No, barely touch them. If you can, you should be able to get a little teeny bit of pressure, but you want it to just want to start to indent in, or just kind of, just a little bit. It doesn't want to be hard as a rock. You don't want it to be too squishy, but just a little bit of give usually means a perfectly ripe avocado. And then you're kind of rolling the dice because avocados are in season usually like January, February, March, April. Anytime after that, you're kind of you never know what you're going to get. You could be throwing baseballs down the, down the street. Who knows? But through the miracle of modern shipping, you can also get avocados from other places in the world. So we's in good shape. All of this modern technology. Modern technology, the interneto, <laughs> as they say. All right. So I'm going to do some little butterflies of avocado here. Maybe a little fresh dice just to make everyone nice and happy. Again, we're foregoing my super French knife skills for the day since we are not cooking le French food. Le. Can't get too serious with goat, huh? No, no, not at all. Goat's not, not made to be serious. <laughs> Just the word goat itself. <laughs> Speaking of goat, does everybody like goat cheese? Yeah, goat cheese is good, right? <laughs> it's goat amazing. Cheese is amazing. Again, you can never have too much goat. You can never have too much goat. All right, we can chop ourselves up a little bit of lettuce, which we'll do here. I think they should redo the song, the cowbell song. I gotta have more goat. Yeah. When I wake up in the morning, I put my pants on one leg at a time, but I make golden goat when I do. <laughs> right? I can do that whole cowbell skit. 
I, I really, thought you were skipping on the knife skills for today. It's really I? funny. Oh, I did that with my ice clothes. <laughs> <laughs> little Julian lettuce. I got some cheese to grate. How fine do you want it? However fine you, however fine you want it. But whip your grater out. Careful about your thumbs. No grating your thumbs. Sprinkle a little cheese over the top of all of our fun here. You can do like it. Improvisational, improvisational, who made up that phrase? Oh, hmm. Improvisational salsa, maybe with a few green onions, right? Just a quick chop on some green onions, maybe a quick chop on some tomato. It's a quick chop for you, for most of us it'd be a slow chop. Well, you know, some of us, yeah, you know, well, you know, my great <laughs> uncle taught me how to do this when I was four. He used an ax. <laughs> You just say, look, here, perfect Bernoise. You should be able to do this someday. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm four. That's some real talent. Yeah, he was, he was a churchgoer. All right, let's see what we got. We can also do a little chili, some cilantro. Mmm, cilantro, yummy. Anybody here uh, think cilantro tastes like soap? Anybody who is watching, wondering, like, God, I just can't get into cilantro. It tastes like soap. It's actually a genetic condition uh, about 12% of the population or so is predisposed to uh, their taste buds reacting to cilantro uh, with a soapy flavor. So wow. not entirely uncommon. If you're saying to yourself, God, I, I just can't get into cilantro, there's a reason for it. Legitimate. It's medical. It's and anything that anything a doctor yeah. say is obviously true. So <laughs> don't forget taking a sip of your beer every once in a while makes the food taste better. Right? Right. Right. All right, From I already got my beans, my cilantro. If nice. you want to do some rice, you can do some rice. We got nacho chips. All we need is a little goat and some goat sauce. So why don't we take our spoon over here. If you really want to like dive into these vegetables, I'm sure they're really tasty. A lot of times stock vegetables are tasty. I got some peppers and tomatoes, and all that good stuff. Wrap them in a tortilla and have a good time, right? And then wow. we got a little goat sauce, stewing liquid. Yum, 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 more yum. Now did all of the tomato sauce that you put in there kind of boil off and then what you have left is the juices from the goat? It, it, you know what, the tomato sauce helps color and enrich in, if that's a word. I don't know, is enrich in a word? Yeah, enrich okay. flour. Sure. It, right. Enrich in, <laughs> uh, it, it enriches the broth and the natural goat brothy kind of we call that the love when we cook at my restaurant. So all that goat love kind of commingles with the richer tomato product. And that adds a lot of body and a lot of texture and some caramel color too if it's roasting at the right temperature. If you want to add a little more color the last half an hour or so to your goat, you jack the temperature up to 425 and get that skin really, really, really crisp. Uh, be careful because you will risk burning it with all that extra product in there. But if you don't burn it, it will taste amazing. So <laughs> we're going to shred up a little bit of goat and then we'll do a few more things with it. We'll make some tacos. You can't have Mexican food without a couple limes. Good acidity, right? Sweetness. This is all way too much fun for a random Wednesday afternoon. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. No argument from the peanut gallery. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see. Put those down, but I'm not, my hands aren't made of asbestos. They might seem like it to some people, but. So we're gonna take our whole goat leg here. Make some room so Nico can see over here. <laughs> Here's our leg. I'm gonna go ahead and, oop. Oh no, it's got a broken leg. Oh, poor oh, lamb. Man, poor thing. Goat, I mean. Good thing it's dead already. <laughs> All right, so you can see, it has kind of a darker brown, like dark meat on chicken kind of look to it. Look at that, all that nice and new and crispy skin there. Man, that's just beautiful. I feel sorry for vegetarians right now. <laughs> totally missing out. There's like yeah, four in the too. room that I'm in right now. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, invite your friends to come over and taste some goat because I'm not cooking for this crowd. All right. It's now that we're stripping our bone here of all this wonderful goaty goatness, look at that, right to the bone. That's cooked perfectly, it peels right away. No effort. I'm super curious right now. Ow, it's a little hot. Yep. Is that goat? It does not suck. 
<laughs> greatest of all time. Greatest of all time. All right. So now we've got our little platter here of goat. There's a million other things we can do with this too, guys. The greatest, one of the greatest things about Mexican food is product utilization. You can have the same seven ingredients and do 100 different things with it. You want to do like a tostada type of thing. You can slap some beans on one side, just like that. Maybe drop another one on top, throw a little sour cream, right? A little bit of cream cheese. I'm using my hands. Don't call the health board. Is, or call um, them, I don't care. Slap and throw on chef terms? Yes, those are very, very technical terms. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like a good slap. All right, and we can take it, chop up a little bit of our meat. Yum. Listen to that skin crackle. Perfectly, perfectly cooked. <laughs> So we can throw a little bit of goat meat on there. Maybe a little bit of our luscious sauce. Mm. Yes. Mm. Smells good. You guys should hit this. That's really where it's at. <laughs> Grate some cheese over the top. Maybe a little bit of that, a little bit more of that fresh cilantro. Yum, or yum. soap. What's that? Or soap. Or soap, yeah, to some people, right? And one of my favorites, a little fresh radish, maybe. A little crunch, a little peppery bite. Do some radishes. That's pretty tasty. You can also do, as they like to say, a quesadilla, as we all know, but it's actually a quesadilla, right? I just try to be funny sometimes. Usually it doesn't work. <laughs> Grate yourself a little bit of cheese. Throw a little bit of goat meat in the middle for a little goat skin and meat quesadilla. Yum. Again with a little lettuce maybe. Shred some of your lettuce up. I'm a big fan of the green onions. So I'm gonna go ahead and make it a huge mess here today. Look at me. It's like I'm four years old again. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. We'll get you your ax. There yeah. You go. Exactly. <laughs> then you just wanna fold that over. Let it set, and we can throw that in another pan and heat it up, cook it on both sides, melt all that cheese in there. And we can do tacos, man. That's what we're here for. We got a platter. You could just heat these up and throw them on the side and let people make their own. You could make somebody a custom little Mexican pizza there. Double decker, tostada, whatever you're in the mood for. But the best when you use these corn tortillas here, give them a little heat. Just set them on a pan or not in a pan, rather, on an open flame. If you have a ceramic cooktop, you can actually do the same thing in your ceramic cooktop at home. Just kind of give them a little roast on both sides, softens them up, toasts them just a touch. You know, take 10, 15 seconds on each side. Give them a little smoky flavor. Goat actually has kind of a natural smoky flavor. I don't know where it comes from. Maybe the 8 million smoked chilies that I put in there. Oh, makes sense now. <laughs> because I always do them with lots of chilies. Hmm. Thought maybe the goats ate the smoked chilies. They could eat smoked chilies. I'm sure goats pretty much eat anything, don't they? We're eating healthy goats that have been farm raised. So they've been eating nothing but beautiful herbs like thyme and rosemary. <laughs> so they come pre-flavored. So they come pre-flavored, exactly. Lots hmm. of herbs, lots of fresh seasonings. You can roast a chili if you want to, just for extra fun. You'd have a chili taco if you're in the mood. But all of a sudden you got some tacos there, or you could even pre-make tacos for people because I'm in the mood for a pre-made taco right now. So you take your taco shell, and we've got our little platter here. So I'm gonna take me a little bit of lettuce and tomato, a couple of chunks of goat meat, maybe a little bit of my goat sauce over here. Yum, 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 yum. You can reduce that sauce a little bit too if you want, kind of thicken it up just a hair. I got some cheese and avocados. A little sour cream. And that is a masterpiece. This is a great way to cook quickly and easily. I mean, I say quickly, it's not that tough. You saw me slap together some things, and yes, I maybe do this for a living. But the goat, you saw me, it took three minutes to start, four minutes to start. You sear it on a couple sides, throw some seasonings in. 
load it into the oven. You know that four hours from now, your friends can come over, and if you're running a little bit behind, it just gives them a few more seconds to enjoy their cocktails. <laughs> and then you just take everything out of the oven, let it rest like we did, and in the 15, 20 minutes it takes you to rest your goat leg, you can chop a few vegetables, and next thing you know, you got platters of food that everyone can nosh on, and then you can all turn around and take a nap or sit in the pool. For us, we all know it's, it's gonna be pool time for us. And this is good because you, you heat it up the house by turning the oven on, so you just go sit outside in the pool, wait for the house to cool down, and then go inside and play Parcheesi or poker or whatever games you're gonna play, whatever, you, whatever it is you do out there in the net. So, <laughs> you know, hang something on Pinterest, whatever you do. So that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is kind of a quick and simple method of how you can use lots of cool things <laughs> and uh, cook some goat. So you can use that meat for any one of a million different things almost any time you see some kind of a spicy shredded meat application. So go out, find a goat, cook it, practice, show off for your friends and enjoy. It's a really interesting, versatile piece of meat that you can cook lots of different ways and, and just have a feast with. So enjoy, ladies and gentlemen, have fun. Well, thank you, and thanks for tuning in, and thanks to Sub-Zero Wolf for um, allowing us to shoot in their, their kitchen. And um, tune in again next week. We'll post um, who's going to be on the show and what time. So thanks again.